All right, let's start with our new equation here. The delta G for any reaction under any conditions is going to be the standard Gibbs energy for that reaction. You know, one bar pressure, 298 Kelvin, one molar concentration of all reactants. And we're going to add to that RT times the natural log of the Q uh, ratio for the reaction. Now, once we calculate the delta G for the reaction, just like any other, any other process, we know that if delta G is negative, then the reaction is going to be spontaneous in the forward direction. If delta G of the reaction is positive, it's going to be non-spontaneous in the forward direction, but it'll be spontaneous in the reverse direction. What about if delta G for the reaction comes out equal to zero? Well, in that case, it's at equilibrium. And it doesn't proceed in the large scale in either direction. Of course, it's happening microscopically in both directions at the same speed. And there's a special condition at equilibrium. You might remember that Q is equal to K at equilibrium. Because remember, let's say, let's do this process here. 2H2O, reversible with 2H2 plus O2. And we'll assume all these are gases. K is going to be the concentration of all these things at equilibrium. And so when we're at equilibrium, sorry, I should put equilibrium here and here. When we're at equilibrium, Q and K are the same thing. So I'm going to plug these values in. So these conditions go with each other. If the delta G of the reaction is zero, we're at equilibrium, and Q is equal to K. So I can plug in zero for delta G of the reaction. I can set that equal to uh, the standard delta G plus RT times the natural log of K. And K is the equilibrium constant for the reaction, the standard equilibrium constant. Now I'm just going to subtract negative RT. So I'm going to subtract uh, RT, natural log of the equilibrium constant, from both sides. And I come up with the equation that says the standard delta G is going to be equal to minus RT times the natural log of the equilibrium constant. This is awesome. Look at this. What we're able to do here is we are able to relate the equilibrium constant to the standard Gibbs energy for any particular uh, reaction. That's pretty powerful. Now I want to make sure you know how to flip back and forth between these. So let's say I have uh, the equilibrium constant. I want to calculate delta G. It's pretty straightforward on how to do it. But let's say I have delta G and I want the, the equilibrium constant. Well, if I want that, I'm going to divide both sides of this equation by negative RT. And if I do that, I get this. And of course, that'll be canceled on this side. Now, I want K alone. The inverse function of the natural log, you can see it here on, on this calculator, right here. See that, that shift, and it goes e to the x? This tells me the inverse function for natural log is e to the x. So what I'll do is I'll raise both sides of this equation, take e to the power of natural log K, e to the power of negative RT, excuse me, negative delta G standard over RT, and I have an equation that allows me to figure out what the equilibrium constant is if I'm given the value of delta G. It's a very powerful and useful equation. So we have this equation here that allows us to relate the value of the standard Gibbs energy with the equilibrium constant for the reaction. And, and check this out. You might remember we talked about K and whether K was uh, greater than 1 or K is less than 1. Well, when we take the natural log of values of something that is greater than 1, then what ends up happening is you get a uh, positive value. So if the natural log of K is greater than 1, so let's see, this would mean the natural log of K is going to end up being positive. You can just see this here. Let's just take the natural log of 1.1 natural log. I get a positive value. And so a positive times a negative is a negative. So when K is greater than 1, that means delta G is going to be negative. So this represents spontaneity in the forward direction. 
Let's see what happens if I take the natural log of a value that's less than 1. So let's just take 0.5, and I'll take the natural log of it. And this is the case. It, it always works this way. If you take the natural log of a value less than 1, then you get a negative value. So if I take this as negative, a negative times a negative is a positive. So if the natural log of k is less than 1, the natural log of k is going to be negative. And uh, then that negative times this negative gives me a delta g positive. So what this tells me is that if my equilibrium constant is less than 1, the reaction will not be spontaneous in the forward direction. It will be spontaneous in the reverse direction. There's yet another relationship that we can look at, the relationship between Q and K that we talked about previously. You might remember this. When we calculate Q, and if we know that Q is less than K, then the reaction has not gone far enough, and it needs to proceed in this direction to get to equilibrium. On the other hand, if Q is greater than K, then we like to say the reaction's gone too far, and we need to proceed in this direction to get to equilibrium. Well, let's see if we can make some sense of this using our newfound equation. So let's see, delta G of the reaction, we know that the standard delta G plus RT times the natural log of Q. We also have this equation here that we can use, right here, right? So I can take my, I know my delta G standard is minus RT times the natural log of K. Well, hey, look, I can plug this right into here. What happens if I do that? Let's find out. Delta G of the reaction is going to be negative RT times the natural log of the equilibrium constant plus RT times the natural log of Q. Well, let's do a little bit of factoring here. I'm going to factor out a positive RT. So that means my delta G of my reaction. That's going to be a positive RT times the natural log of Q minus the natural log of K. And there happens to be a law of logs that the natural log of A minus the natural log of B, that's going to be the same thing as the natural log of A divided by B. And so I can apply that here. If I do this, I get the delta G for the reaction is positive RT times the natural log of Q over K, this particular ratio. All right, now let's see what this tells me. Okay, if Q is less than K, this value will be less than 1. And we just learned that if we have a ratio that's less than 1 and we take the natural log of it, well, that's going to be a negative value, correct? So in this case, uh, natural log of Q over K is negative. And so that's going to apply in this case that delta G of the reaction, positive times a negative, is going to be negative if Q is less than K. And hey, look what we remembered up here. If Q is less than K, we proceed in the forward direction. That matches perfectly with a spontaneous delta G. Yep, Q is less than K. We're going to head in this direction. Well, that's kind of cool. Now let's check out the, the case where Q is greater than K. Well, in this case, we know that the natural log of Q over K in this case would be the natural log of a number greater than 1, which is going to be positive. So a positive, this is, all, this is positive and this is positive. So in this case, the delta G for the reaction is going to be positive if Q is greater than K. And we just got done showing up here. If Q is greater than K, it's not going to be spontaneous in the forward direction. That matches what we know about delta G. It's going to be spontaneous in the reverse direction. So, oh boy, let me draw my arrow this way and make sure that these are connected to one another.